yes, speaking of the trials, so could you talk about the benefits of Delta Tocotrino? But particularly, I mean, if you could just kind of give an overview of the ones that, that, that it has, and then it would be great if we could dive into one or two that are most relevant for kind of aging. Yes. Um, on, I know that you're particularly interested, and so are your audience, uh, about health span. I, I will give a simplistic statement. I'm no expert in this. I'm a learner like everybody else. And then I'm trying to see how does Toko try, you know, fit. I think of health span and lifespan. Lifespan would be extending the life of people and health span would be for the life that you have extended. How might you have health in that area? Most of the work with Toko Traino is in health span. So that, that, so I put it in context. There were a few study done in Japan on the lifespan using C. elegans, the worm, because they only live for about 35 days. And then they said that the DNA uh, is not shortened, their life is longer, about 30% like that. And then there was some animal study, mostly in the how, uh, lifespan of animal in the animal study, they were not healthy animal, they were sick animal. In the study of extending of lifespan in sick animal, they're usually infirm with some kind of cancer or some kind of muscle, they may have muscle problem, like they have a, a mitochondrial dysfunction, or they're in the liver, they have a high sugar and the liver is messed up and the liver is health. So in that area, we study senescence. Uh, 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 an area well known to Dr. James Kirkland, who studied this kind of senescent. I think of senescent cells simply as when the cell go old, it's supposed to die. It didn't die, so it just persists, and then that becomes a problem to the other cells around. So we consistently see that Toko Traino is able to bring the senescent cell to uh, 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 to death. Or if it's a mitochondria, it brings the mitochondria to death. So new mitochondria would go. Uh, so sometimes uh, we use as autophagy. And a Japanese professor got the two, 2019 Nobel Prize on this autophagy. There's an ability of bringing the cell to death like that. So that is at the construct of a molecular level. We do this. But remember, I'm almost 70 years old. I like to know mechanism. I like to know this, but it, I wouldn't say this 20 years ago. But today, I want to know if Toko Traino work regardless of its, regardless of its mechanism. That drove me hard, Richard, to do a lot of animal study. Does it work uh, on chronic condition? So, so therefore, I decided that in the area of health span, I'm interested in chronic conditions. So what kind of chronic condition? The chronic conditions that we have studied, hundreds of animal study with about 25 clinical trials. The chronic condition we first study was lipidemia, high lipids, mm -hmm. and then metabolic syndrome. So the sugar is moderately high, but not high enough to be diabetic, like pre-diabetic. We also study a, a diabetes, we also study uh, overweight and obesity. And finally, we went hard after fatty liver disease. It's a big problem. Uh, as we are getting increased wealth, we sit in front of the computer more and more, and then we are eating a lot of fat, that situation. We also, uh, we did a study on bone health on postmenopausal women, osteopenia, osteoporosis, and right now we have an ongoing study on men and women uh, with obesity uh, greater than uh, 30 uh, uh, BMI in Texas like that. So all of this is a cluster of chronic condition, but the one that I love the most, uh, were, or I did the most work is in fatty liver disease. Now, separate to all of this chronic condition, you may or may not want to pursue this, which is fine, I leave it to you. We have about seven to eight clinical trials on in cancer in Denmark. One of them will be in Florida, seven will be in Denmark. I'm thrilled about that. That has to do with the changing of the DNA and so that the aberrant cell will not go bad. So I pretty much 
put forward with all of this to you. So how about I start with just the metabolic syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the fatty liver one, and mm -hmm. see what other ones you want to pick up. Yeah. After we've done this pre-diabetes and diabetes and dyslipidemia, I decided to go after the fatty liver because <clears throat> the liver is the largest single organ. So I decided to go after that because the liver does about seven, at least 700 different biochemical function. So there is no uh, uh, easily liver transplant. Uh, you can have liver transplant, but there's no artificial liver. You can have artificial heart, but no liver because of the huge amount of biochemical uh, function it does. So I decided to go hard after it and fatty liver infirm about 30 to 35 percent of the global population. In fact, there's a study that just came out from Sweden in the European uh, Association of Cardiology. This uh, lady professor uh, study about 31, 30,000 patients and at 40 and 50 years old where they had metabolic syndrome and follow them for 20 years. This is not an enviable study. 40 to 50 years old with metabolic syndrome, they follow them for 20 years and the study is now reviewed. I'll just give you the shorthand. The paper is not published, it's presented about 30% of those with metabolic syndrome died earlier. And for those that have uh, developed cardiac, uh, uh, non-fatal cardiac arrest, those that have metabolic syndrome have 2.3 years sooner to have non-fatal myocardiac infarction than those uh, that have no metabolic syndrome. So that whole cluster tells me, so it is health span. <laughs> it's health span, but it's just chosen to study like that. It's very difficult to study human. You have to study for this length of time. People can ask this question, it's legit, but to do this study is almost always funded by the government. 30,000 patients. Even pharmaceutical drugs can't do that. And you have to study it over 20 years. Maybe the principal investigator is not even living after 20 years, but this study survived. So if the audience keep a finger on this, it's like this. This is what we decided to do, Toko, right now on, in the study of fatty liver in one of the case like that. So we study them in three months, six months, and separately in 12 months. In the three month study, we study simple things. Does the liver enzyme go up? ALT, AST, the audience who have fatty liver condition will know exactly what I'm uh, talking about. And then study oxidized fat. Is the fat increased like that? And then we found that it dropped. Then the study was published. Then we study a six-month study. I, I need to have a little bit confirmation on it. In the six months study, whatever we study in three months, we carry over the 12 months and carry it over the uh, uh, six months as well as 12 months after. In the six months study, we ask deeper question. Besides the liver enzyme, we also study is the inflammation contained. Uh, it, it is the, uh, 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 we use ultrasound to scan uh, the liver to see if the fat stay there or egress from the liver. We saw that the fat egress, all good. So, and it also continued to contain. Finally, we did a 12 month study. That the 12 month study with zero time, six months marker so that we can compare with the earlier six month study and then a 12 month study. And then I told my, my research group, after 12 months, I'm done. I don't want to do another study. Because the 12 month study took me three years to do. You have to randomize and collect people. It's not 12 months mean 12 months. It's just a 12 month duration of the study. And in the 12 month study, we asked all the questions we asked before. We, I did that to know if it is sustainable. So when we did the 12 month study, we have CAT scan because we, they did not allow us to use liver biopsies because you, these are not people with cirrhosis or other things. So this is too invasive. So we use CAT scan to see if 
the fatty tissues are in the liver. If they're in the liver too long, they'll form scarring tissue. And when they have scarring tissue, then it gone off to the right. So they may not be able to reverse. This is when they have NASH. So fatty liver is the acronym N-A-F-L-D, non-alcohol fatty liver disease. If it gone too far to the right, then it's NASH non-alcohol hepatitis. So that means that it, it is gone too far and not able to reverse any further than they will be on a liver transplant list like that. And we simply will never have enough liver for such transplant. You, would you imagine this? For 30, 40 years ago, abuse of alcohol would cause liver cirrhosis. Who would have guessed 30 years after that you can eat too much fat and too much fat can abuse the liver like alcohol do. Nobody would have guessed this. So this, that's why the disease is even called awkwardly non-alcohol fatty liver disease. So we did the 12 month study and it's all done. And we, I beautifully drew a curve at zero times, three months, six months, and 12 months uh, like that. I make many presentation in scientific meeting on this. So the TOCO trial, you know, clearly mitigate the liver condition and, and, and many instances reverse the fatty liver back to normal health rather than to progress toward NASH and then uh, a liver transplant. I'm thrilled about that. And my colleague picked up something on this and this also bodes well uh, with uh, health span. She said that, Barry, did you notice in the three month study, they lost about 12 pounds. And then in the six month study, they also lose approximately 12 pounds and further. And then I, I, I keep questioning her. I just said that, well, it may not be sustained. Then in 12 months, they continue to lose weight. The reason I was skittish, Richard, was I did not want to call this a weight loss product because in weight loss product, it usually happened in one month or less. I don't have a study one month or less. My shortest study was three months. So my colleague then, colleague said, then Barry, just say what you find. You found that you had weight loss in three, six, and 12 months. So I didn't say that they have weight loss in one month. We don't have the study. So I think that the TOCO trial, you know, is not so much a weight loss product per se. The body metabolism is so out of kilter. So as they take TOCO trieno, it become back to normality. And with the process of getting back to normality, and then, then the weight begin to adjust and came back. So we consistently see now approximately 12 pounds or about five to six kg uh, loss per person over three months, six months and sustained to 12 months. I'm very proud of those study. These people take, I know the audience would like to find out, they, we put them on 600 milligram. They take 300 milligram with two meal, lunch and dinner or breakfast and lunch, whichever one that have enough fat because the fat help to emulsify the vitamin E that is lipid soluble so the vitamin E can absorb better. So I just gave you my best foot out of all the study we've done that the fatty liver was the best case of all of them. You also saw that uh, vitamin E uh, would help with um, lipid, the, the lipid panel, like lower LDL and improved triglycerides. Mm -hmm. um, correct? That's correct. It, it generally lower the LDL about uh, 15%, 10-15%. It, low, it increased the HDL, the good cholesterol, uh, typically about 5%, not much higher. So that's a good sign, the two of them. And for the triglyceride, that was a consistent part. It typically lowered the triglyceride about 20, sometimes even 30%. So the audience is listening in. Your doctors always will do a lipid profile. It will contain this. And usually the doctor will look at the LDL and HDL. Infrequently, the doctor will talk about triglyceride, but you want to take it on to read how well is the triglyceride drop. And why do I focus on it? Allow me to tell a story on this. About 20 years ago, 
there was a Stanford endocrinologist. His name is Gerald Reven. He has since retired and passed away. He was mystified when he was studying people on the uh, a metabolite when generally the sugar is high but not diabetes and the triglyceride is high but not so high they have hypertriglyceridemia and the hdl is low like that at the time he called it syndrome x it was not called metabolic syndrome it was probably doing the famous movie of the x file so anything x is very sexy so he called it a uh, 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 syndrome x after he solved this then he called it metabolic syndrome and now it's well used so he was going to american diabetes association to collect an award and there were many people wanting to ask questions and i'm a short asian guy i can't uh, put myself to the front and the next speaker was going to come on i knew i was never going to get my question asked so i sneakishly wait for him to exit and then i ran to him on the side uh, on the off stage to ask him a question you can see he was a little bit irritated because he was trying to catch a flight back to san francisco and like that so as I was asking questions, you don't need to ask me any question. Let me tell you a sentence. If you got it, you know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you the sentence he made, and I'll simplify the sen one sentence. That's all he did. His name is Gerald Reven. He's a person who came up with this metabolic syndrome and explained this. And since you can Google, he had many uh, 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 YouTube video. You, you can listen to him talk about it. He said, hypertriglyceridemia always precedes hyperglycemia that's what that's all and then he walks away a simple rendition to the statement he made is you get high triglyceride first before you get high sugar so as the triglyceride go up did, he is actually telling you the shorthand of what metabolic syndrome is as the triglyceride go up it contained the sugar. Think of the sugar in the dam. But eventually the triglyceride is so high, it can't contain any more. So when it cannot contain any more, the floodgate bursts and the sugar release. But as the triglycerides go up, the sugar moderately go up. But if the mm -hmm. triglycerides go way up, the sugar bursts and then you have type 2 diabetes. So you don't get type 2 diabetes overnight you slowly creep up on the triglyceride. So because of that, I'm trying to capture in the metabolic syndrome, before people have type 2 diabetes, how to address the triglyceride. We consistently saw in the three months, six months, and the 12 months that the triglyceride consistently contained and dropped. That is very sweet to me. And we also studied the sugar, the sugar drop. Oh, we also studied the A1C, the whole bit. I'm only telling you to capture a little bit. So if the audience is interested, uh, send me an email. I gave you all the three papers and I gave you a chart to see how this is studied. So to me, that was very satisfying when we use the vitamin E tocotra, you know, is able to confirm how to mitigate the condition Professor Reven talked about when he came up with the concept and the mechanism of metabolic syndromes. Mm -hmm.